one of the comments that they that they initiated and brought up said that uh, in Iran, BBC was listened to, you know, a great deal and this and that. And uh, and again, I, you know, we're somewhat critical of the efforts that we were making. Uh, so I'd like to, you know, for you to comment on that a little bit. I, I know you mentioned money and resources and things, and I, I guess you know I would just like to know, you know, where where you think we're going with that. The other thing that they mentioned was that one of the problems they might see is that with it being headquartered, I think they said in Budapest, is that right? Or we're, we're in Prague. In Prague, yeah. I'm sorry. But, but with the, a section like Iran being headquartered there, that they were maybe a little bit more subject to intimidation, you know, some of your broadcasters, uh, in the sense that, you know, that society is, is uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more cosmopolitan and there's a lot more coming and going and uh, that it might be more difficult with some of your broadcasters uh, either, uh, you know, being threatened subtly or indirectly or whatever, uh, that maybe they weren't as aggressive as they ought to be. So, uh, and their recommendation was that we, that we ought to think, you know, about maybe pulling some of that back here so that you could be more aggressive, you know, in, in this society versus that society. So can you comment on, on those things for me? Congressman, happy to start. Um, first of all, I think that uh, there's a need for BBC and Voice of America and radio. Our brand in, in Iran is called Radio Farnah, and I think they all play complementary roles. And I think in each case, if I may say, you could probably quibble about this program or that, and if anybody raised specific questions about our programming, I'd, I'd be happy to, to address them specifically. Uh, I'll just take up the one. Um, our whole headquarters is in Prague uh, for reasons of history. After the Cold War, we moved from Munich to Prague because Václav Havel invited Bill Clinton to move us uh, from Munich to Prague. It is true uh, that the Iranian regime is quite talented and uh, tenacious in finding ways to intimidate people, and they do that to, to our journalists. And we are, in fact, moving some of our colleagues here to Washington. Uh, I'd be happy to engage you offline any time on the pros and cons of moving them all to Washington. There are about 40 of them. If we did that, of course, they would disconnect from the larger company and colleagueship, and there may be some advantages and maybe some disadvantages, but it's a, it's a thoughtful remark. Right. The VOA uh, Persian News Network, as we style it, is headquartered here in Washington. We've got a total of about 200 people between uh, uh, part-time contractors and full-time employees, uh, and we are broadcasting eight hours of live television a day into the country, so it's a substantial presence. I think it's costing the government around $16, 17000000 million a year to do that. Our British friends uh, just started their television uh, effort uh, back, I believe, in March of this year. Uh, they are spending roughly twice uh, what we are. Uh, they, the BBC has wonderful production values, there's no doubt about it. It remains to be seen how we're doing competitively. Uh, we know from our previous research that we had about a 30% market share in Iran. Now, a commercial network would kill for numbers like that, uh, believe me. Uh, we did some flash research uh, in the turmoil uh, past, the, uh, past the election. Uh, th these results are not projectable to the entire country, so I want to be very careful here. But the indication we got was that about half of the people that we did survey were using VOA television as a means of getting their information. Now, we know that the BBC was up there as well. Uh, and they are a competitor, and I absolutely agree with Jeff, the more the merrier. The more voices that you have, the people of Iran will be the ones who benefit, and that really is the idea. You know, Dan, I, I actually, you had me come over, you know, and do a, a, a live show. And that's something, if you haven't done, Mr. Chairman, I think you'd really enjoy, or, or in the rest of the, the panel. Uh, but I was very impressed by that. I, I thought the, uh, the call-ins, the emails and stuff, you know, were very good. And then again, the ability to, uh, you know, for the in-sync, you know, translation, all those kind of things. So uh, I would encourage the committee, you know, with you being, you know, your group being so close, that that's something that, that these guys might enjoy doing. No, Congressman, thank you. I uh, believe me, it's, it's great when we can get members 
uh, to go on the call-in shows. You have an opportunity. You did it with China, I think. Uh, uh, you can do it with Iran. You can do it with other parts of the world where you can actually engage in dialogue directly with the people. Uh, we hold that out, to, obviously, to members, to people in the administration as well, and they can do it. It's, it's a great way to keep that conversation going. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, may I add 30 seconds to the Congressman's question? Now, now Dan Austin is my friend, and we're complementary and reinforcing, but we have to have a little competition here. You can't only go over to the Cohen Building and do Voice of America. Now, we may be in Prague, but we've got tele teleconferencing equipment, and you can appear on our programs any time of the day. I, I just want to mention, uh, as a footnote, Congressman, uh, that these Iranians who work for us in Prague uh, who are subject to, to intimidation, uh, they do a great job. And I'll tell you two things. Uh, when not so long ago the government of Iran uh, had fuel rationing and these long lines at gas stations sprouted up everywhere, we had quiet freelancers inside the country who would go to these gas lines and stick a microphone under people's nose and say, what are you doing here? What is this all about? One guy told us, Mr. Chairman, you'll like this. He said, I don't know because we're an energy rich country and I'm waiting five hours for gas for my car and my government is giving my tax money to Hezbollah. Okay? And I tell you recently, when the government of Iran or in Tehran decided that it would be illegal to have pet dogs walked in parks because it wasn't consistent with the ruler's version of Islam, we did a report on that. We were the only one. And all of a sudden, we found it very quickly from our audiences that it wasn't just pet owners who were upset. The police in Tehran were upset that they had to enforce these foolish laws. So just parenthetically, our guys who are in Prague, who are subjected to these, these threats and blackmail, they do some pretty courageous work. Thank you. Mr. Sirius. Yes. Um, again, thank you very much for being here. Uh, 